Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a Stash Crasher project, an inspirational deck of cards. As I said, we're making a themed inspirational quote deck of cards. This is a fun, easy project that uses easily sourced and inexpensive supplies, including those leftover bits of gel prints, collage papers that we all have in our stash. I have these four and a half inch triangular flashcards made of thick tag board, but you can use regular flashcards, cards from games, or even cut mixed media paper to whatever shape or size you want. If you don't have this, you can easily and inexpensively get them from your local dollar or thrift store. I made 26 double sided cards over a span of three or so days. But you can do this project over weeks, keeping supplies in a bin ready to go. You will not see me making every single card, but you will see sped up video of each step. FYI, pictures of finished cards will be shown at the end of the video, so you can check all that out. More importantly, I'll be giving you helpful tips and tricks throughout as I describe the steps and process, so you might want to keep the sound on. I've already said this is a great project for using up the things that we have in our stash, but it's also a super great project for the beginner art journaler mixed media, as it allows you to practice skills and techniques such as playing with color, working with on composition, working with sentiments, shading, and doodling. So to complete this project, you're going to need gel prints, collage paper, colored papers. I have these quarter sheets and less in these plastic folders. I also have full sheets and half sheets in my file folder system, and I'll be using all of that. You'll need an adhesive. I ended up using gel medium matte. I started with the fluid medium, but the gel medium worked better. But use whatever adhesive you have. Remember, this is about using what's in your stash. You'll need some circle punches or templates so you can cut out circles of different sizes if you choose to do circles like I did. I had a stash of these that I had punched from previous projects. As I said, you're going to need a substrate. I have these triangular flashcards. You can use tags, you can use cards from games, you can use regular flashcards. You'll need an angle brush and some black acrylic paint for shading. I'll put a link to the shading video. Check out the eye cards in the top right hand corner. You'll need gold paint that's been thinned and a splatter brush to splatter. You'll need a black and a white Posca pen or gel pen to do some doodling later on. You'll need full sheet sticker paper to print your digital sentiments on. And you'll need a digital sentiment pack. I'm going to be using my Simplify Sentiment Pack. They're all available at ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box. So I emptied out my pouch of pink papers. I'm sticking to color families. So my first step here is to sort and organize these papers, put like with like, and then I'm also putting things that I think go together. I'm not trying to overthink this. I'm just moving fairly quickly and following my instincts. When I have enough papers that I think will cover up the complete card, I'm going to glue it down. Don't wait till you have all of them figured out. So here I've cut waves and collaged it down, glued it all down. Once it's dry, I'm going to cut off the excess and make sure that everything's glued down properly. Sometimes those corners need a little extra attention later on.
Here I decided that I'm going to use the punch to make circles and I'm just going to layer the circles on to see what effect that gives. My goal here was to experiment, to have fun, and to learn things. If I liked how something worked, I did it again. If I didn't, it was a one-off. I didn't want to gesso my cards, so collaging gel paint prints onto it was the perfect way of skipping that step. There are, the possibilities are endless. There is no right or wrong. I like doing different things on different cards, so there's variety on, on each card. I like mixing and matching something with a lot of pattern with something that's more a solid, as you see here. All in all, I want to build interest into this first layer. Interest, texture, color. Now I'm sticking to the color family basically, but you can mix and match colors. You could put yellow and greens together. You could put pink, purple, and yellow together. The sky is the limit. Doing this project in assembly line fashion, where you put all the first layers on, then cut them all off, then re-glue them, is a great way to continue the project. Here, I'm gluing an entire sheet on. Instead of ripping it up or cutting it up, I'm just putting one layer and on most cards one side of the card this is what I've done I didn't want to have too much bulk on each card here's another example where I've used kind of a solid with a pattern and I'm just layering it up Collaging these papers down to make the background, you could do this exact thing on an art journal page. It adds lovely texture, pattern, and color to your project. Basically, you're doing mini art journal pages on each card. When I take a break, I take my brush that has the matte medium in it and put it in a thing of saran wrap so it doesn't dry up. So here are the pink colors. I want a variety, so I'm doing about five of each color. And I've thrown out some of those extra little bits, so I've organized my stash. Here's what it looked like before. See how fat this is? So we're going to do the blue. I've narrowed it down, I've collaged it down, and I've got some variety here. Yellow's up next. So again, I'm dumping it, sorting them out, putting like with like, if there's three or four paid pieces that are the same pattern, I keep them together. When I have enough of a pattern, I put it on. Now you'll see those numbers are disappeared and the reason on I put gesso on that because this is tissue paper or deli paper and I didn't want to see the numbers. Here I'm gluing down some straight edge ones with some ripped ones and getting some interesting patterns. I find when I do this kind of activity and do it kind of rote, I become more creative the longer I keep working. Right? More ideas come to me. I really liked using tissue paper. Here I put a layer of tissue paper down and then I'm adding some ripped strips on top. Do you see the big circles in the back and the little ones on the front? I did that on purpose. It makes for an interesting effect, doesn't it? Making sure all the corners are glued down. 
and adding something if I think it needs it. You can always alter it. Colored coffee filters work well. Again, I've gessoed that card or the numbers out so they don't show up before I glue the coffee filter down. And just like that, we have the yellow ones done. And you can see how you can have variation even though they are all the same. Going around the color wheel, now we're doing green. I'm kind of patching where there's a hole to make it look like it was a solid sheet. Here again, we're using a coffee filter. They are wonderful to collage with. If you haven't tried, give it a try. This one's a cone filter. The basket filters work well, but they, they do collage down differently. And then I'm going to layer up some copy paper gel prints. Here, instead of ripping it, I've just put the straight edge and I'm ripping the mulberry paper here. Mulberry paper also collages down wonderfully well. I've left a lot of this video in, although I've sped it up, so you can see the variations in the different ways that I'm approaching it. If you're not a beginner, you may want to speed ahead to the next step. I also like combining deli paper with regular paper or tissue paper, coffee filter, different weights of papers. That also adds interest to your page. Some of these gel prints that have been in my stash for over five years. So here I reach for a circle because remember I grabbed out the punch for earlier. Didn't really like that effect, but I thought, hmm, what if I put this one? And I remembered that I had all these punch circles that I had done for another project. Again, this is the time to play and experiment. So I've done one side and I'm checking the corners, gluing it down. You can use your gel medium, you can use a glue stick, and then I'm edging it. I'm using my Ranger blending foam and going around with black acrylic paint. Now I haven't done the other side and I recommend putting collage papers on both sides before you do this step. It'll just save you work later on. I like that, the effect of the edging. And I went ahead and I added some sentiments on a couple of them just to see how I was going to finish it up. So here I decided that instead of just gluing that in a block, I was going to get rid of some of the white and cut it out. Now normally you would leave the backing on the sticker paper on, and I do for the rest of it. This one I kind of made a mistake or I changed my mind. At this point, I thought I was done with the backgrounds or that first layer, but I was really liking the look of that circle 
on this card and then I put another one on this card and I thought you know what I'm going to put circles on all of them big circle then I've got a medium sized circle and again as I kept going I would add one or two I would overhang them over the edge I'd overlap them and you're going to see all those variations coming up here so again I lay them out the cards out on my table and I'm flipping through the colored circles in my basket and additioning them on each one. And when I like what I see, I'm grabbing my gel medium and gluing it down. Again, don't get caught in making it perfect. Try different things. Move fairly quickly, don't overthink. Which is part of my simplify word of the year, because I tend to overthink. So here we got some more cards and I'm grabbing all the circles and putting them on. Sometimes I go for complementary colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. Sometimes I'm picking colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, like this one. There's blue in the brick stenciling in the background. So I'm putting blue on, trying different ones. You find one you like, and I'm gluing it on. Here I've covered up some, some of that white that I didn't like. You can also cover up something you don't like that's on the background at this stage. Here I've used complementary color with the teal and green. So I've got a lot of them done. I'm just going to show you some of the examples here, different circles, but we're going to bring up the circles. Here I put one circle on top of the other. Here I have two circles, but I've cut one in half. Here I have a strip and a circle. Anything goes. And we are going to make these circles stand out a little bit more with some shading a little bit later. Here I'm putting two. Here I'm overlapping a big one and a little one. So this is where you get to play with color. Now this is my Simplify Sentiment Pack and I've printed this out on full sheet sticker paper. Grab my Tim Holtz cutter and I'm cutting off the excess around the edge. And these bits, I'm not throwing them out. I'm going to colorize them and turn them into DIY washi tape. Once the sentiments are cut out into their rectangular shape, I'm lining them up on my table so I can see all of them. And then I'm putting my cards on the table. So here's where I'm going to match the sentiment to the composition on the card. And yes, I've already done some. So we'll talk a little bit about what I do with some of the sentiments. These are digital sentiments. You resize them to fit the size of your project. I think most of mine I did about 85%. So here I'm auditioning. Here I put the rectangles on and then I decide I want to get rid of some of that white. I don't like it all boxy so I'm bubble cutting around it. Just leaving a little bit of white on there and I really like that look. If you're okay with the rectangular shape with lots of white, go for that. Then it's a matter of peel and stick. Again, I'm working to build variation in the cards. So every card is not gonna be identical. I don't wanna do the same thing with the sentiment. And I move it around, play it on each card, on different cards until it goes, yeah, that works and then I put it, put it down. I don't cut it all apart to begin with and then I cut more as I go. Now remember that A at the top, that actually is going to be where I'm going to hole punch 
So avoid putting it at the top of the triangle if you're making a triangle. So here we're bubble cutting. The other one, we're eliminating a lot of the white but leaving it in a rectangular shape. But by treating different parts of the same sentiment on, on the, each card differently, builds that variation in. Here, I only had one circle, but to put this word, I needed two to make it look good. So I went searching for another orange circle, glued it down, and then I can put the sentiment on top. Again, I am bubble cutting. That is something I like to do. Usually I definitely do it when it's script, but here you can see how much better it looks when I bubble cut it to leaving all that white on it. It somehow lets you see the card better or the whole project as opposed to just seeing the sentiment. And then it allows you to play with the composition. Where do you want the words to go? And you're matching it. Here I've got the two circles. If there was, when I tried this on another card and there was only one large circle, it looked different. Some cards need bolder fonts or larger. Some cards can handle less bold fonts. That's why my sentiment packs, I use a combination of them. So there you can always find the perfect sentiment for whatever project you're doing. My sentiment packs, there's lots of theme pack, perseverance, change, BU, garden, ocean, even sassy sayings. I'm sure you can find a sentiment pack that is perfect for you. So it's just a matter of peel and stick. If you don't have the sticker paper to print on, you can print this out onto copy paper, regular copy paper, and glue it on with your gel medium or adhesive. But I really liked the ease of the peel and stick. It made this project so much easier. I'll put a link to the sticker paper that I use because I've used the stuff from the dollar store, but I find that it is not the same quality and doesn't work as well. You can see the variation on the sentiments from this over picture here. Everyone's just a little bit different. I've overlapped some, I've bubble cut some, I've left some more into the rectangular shape, more white. And then I'm putting a layer of gel medium on top. This will seal the sentiment down to the page and make it a non-porous surface. So when we go on to shading, it works a little bit easier. Here I'm shading the circles. I want these circles to stand out. It's a cohesive element between all the cards. So I'm using black acrylic paint, my angle brush, and my floating acrylic tech sh technique, shading technique, sorry. I'm also going where the circle has overlapped the edge. I no longer have the shading on the edge. So I'm adding that at this time as well. Because there's matte medium on there, if I make a mistake here, I can quickly get take it back and wipe it off with a baby wipe. And again, I'm doing it assembly line. So I'm doing all the shading in one step. All the sentiments were in one step. If you're a newbie, you may want to only do about five cards through the entire process and figure out what you like before you commit to doing it for all of them. There's satisfaction in getting five done and then do another five and another five and another five.
hopefully you can see the difference that the shading makes in bringing out that circle. Now remember, this video is sped up. I'm not moving that fast. And this did take me three, the better part of three days of working on this project. Now I'm going to add some outlining. If the word was in a rectangle, I just outlined it with my black, black or white Posca pen. And then I did some outlining detail on the card. Here I've done dash, dot, dot, dot. You could do dash, dash, dash. It could be all dots. The sky's the limit. Use white or black. You can use color ones as well if you want. Again, I wanted different things on different cards. Pictures of all of them are at the end so you can stop and actually look at the pictures. Once everything was done, I lined them up on my desk and I splattered with gold. Just like having circles on all of them, having the splatters of gold on all of them brings it together and makes it cohesive. It's a set. Simplify is my word of the year. That's why I'm making this inspirational deck of cards. I'm hole punching. And once I know where it is, I want to roughly keep it in the same place. So I'm just marking where I'm going to punch on each card. And then I'm just using the single hole punch to do that. I want this inspirational deck of cards to keep me focused on my word of the year. And here are all the cards. I love them, and I hope that you do too. If you want my sentiment pack, you can find it by going in the, to the link in the description box below at ninniesnapkins.com. I hope you grab your gel prints and collage papers and use them. Make yourself an inspirational deck or gift it to a friend. Here's the other side. Love this one. So the ones that I really like, I might try to do something similar on an art journal page. I like how I cut out the words of the word less there and then layered them on top of each other. Like I said, the ones that I like, I'm gonna to try to duplicate in some way on an art journal page. The colors, the textures, the, the lines. I love the flow of this one too. And you can see the A there. I did solve that problem or fix it. And here it stands. This triangular one stands on the counter like this. And every day I can flip and get to another one. Here are all the cards. The other 13 cards, double-sided 13 cards, I've got pictures at the end. 
I hope you give this a try. If you post it on social media, be sure to tag me. Until next time, go get creative.